My name is Cass Elliott, and have I got a secret. From Hollywood, a show that reveals all, I've got a secret. And now, let's see the star of I've got a secret, Steve Allen. Welcome to I've Got a Secret. Tonight's panelists are a wild group. Very funny lady, great gamester or gamestress, <laughs> Pat Carroll. His eminence, Henry Morgan. Uh, a bright and beautiful dramatic star, Anita Gillette. Blah. And the affable and almost unflappable and unbaffleable, Richard Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, before we start, you know, we get thousands, literally, of secrets through the mail. And before we meet our first contestant, I thought you might get a kick just briefly out of a couple that we're not going to be able to use on the show. This is real now. A woman in Blue Island, Illinois, writes this. Dear, I've got a secret. My husband has saved all the stubble from his electric razor for the past eight years. <laughs> he now has a pound of it in a box. <laughs> That's funny, lady, but I'm sorry we're not going to use it. And uh, here's another uh, wild one, a household hint from North Hollywood, California. This is real, I swear to you. Lady says, I take off all my clothes and get into the shower stall. <laughs> then I sponge off the tiles with a solution and follow by using one of my old toothbrushes, scrubbing with it between each square tile. Then I rinse the stall and myself and we're both very clean. <laughs> Speaking of writers, may I tell you that I had a beautiful gift given to me. I had your brand new novel, The Wake. Oh, thank and you. And so I'm much. looking forward to reading it because I understand it's based on your background. Well, so much for Some that, and thank talent. you. We're going to get to a contestant. Thank you, Richard. Well, oh, don't mention it. Now let's meet our next guest. Could you tell the panel your name, please? I'm Dorothy Elliott. And where are you from, Mrs. Elliott? Nevada, Iowa. Nevada. Looks like Nevada on paper, but it's called Nevada, for your information. And would you tell us your official position back there in Nevada? Well, I'm Story County Auditor, and I'm County Commissioner of Elections. The Iowa Legislature uh, panel redistricted Mrs. Elliott's area before the last election, as a result of which a new precinct was created. And although the precinct had 850 uh, inhabitants, not a single vote was cast, as it turned out, for any candidate. And Mrs. Elliott's secret concerns why that strange state of affairs happened. So if you'll whisper your secret to me, Mrs. Elliott, we'll let the audience know what it is. <laughs> nice. Sir. Okay, panel. Mrs. Elliott's secret, as we've told you, uh, concerns why nobody voted in the new precinct. And we'll start the questioning with Pat Carroll. Uh, Mrs. Elliott, did it have anything to do with any electronic devices, as we have had problems locally with <laughs> no, machines breaking down? You still do it by hand there in Iowa. Oh, no, we don't. We do it by machines, oh, but this was but not. It was not an electronic problem. No. Uh, with the redistricting, did they make the mistake of just cutting out this entire section? No, it was just uh, divided. It was divided and did not conquer. Mm. Uh, did it have to do with the people just not showing up? No, no. They did show up. So it was nothing that no, they did wrong. Uh, that no, nobody was... showed up. Uh, does that confuse you? Uh, did they give them the wrong day for the election? <laughs> no, but those are all... The way government goes, why not? Very good thoughts indeed. You've eliminated a lot of things. Henry. All right. No, I was wondering, I don't know if this has been covered. Um, was the district still in, in your state? Yes. Mm -hmm. did, and the people did not show up, but you had your polling places open? Polling. Well, yes, the precinct is there, yes. Well, no, you, you use machines. Someone yes. could have voted, yes. Yes. And yeah, there were, everything was there. Mm -hmm. And you're waiting was... for the people, right? And... Yeah, sort of. What does that mean? It means I'm nervous. <laughs> No, I just said that. Now, the, the people knew, of course, it's election day, and, right. and they knew where to go. Yes. All over the country it was happening, and in that immediate neighborhood, yes. <laughs> was there any kind of natural disaster, such as is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Henry and Nita. They, they, they weren't all drunk or anything. I mean, it wasn't a big party, and they all 
all got smashed and, you know, no, that's really people. absurd. <laughs> no, but it didn't, it didn't have anything to do with illness of any sort. No? That they weren't uh, all sick or anything. No, they were maybe a little overweight, they but were they weren't. A little, uh, <laughs> overweight. It's a hint for you. Duh, Out that's of the goodness a hint. of my heart. Oh, you're so sweet. Did it, have it, did it have something to do <laughs> with overeating? <laughs> Maybe. Over it. What? It's up to you, Richard. Were they all aliens? Uh. Mm, That's no. a very reasonable question. It's I'm aliens. not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Were they not allowed to vote? I mean, there's one state, isn't there, or a district of Columbia or somewhere? Well, you're from Iowa, aren't you? Right. I don't know where the heck I am in America. <laughs> I'll give you an additional hint, which is an answer to your direct question. The 850 inhabitants are not allowed to vote. They are underage? No. <laughs> are they, they're not humans? That's right. right. They're not are they human. turkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting warm? <laughs> I don't know why that struck me so funny. Uh, Mrs. Elliot's secret is that the 850 inhabitants in her precinct are all hogs. <laughs> Now, you know, I, I don't want to be, a, a, you know, a, a big problem. I have never, never heard of any animal other than the human animal being referred to as an inhabitant. There's well, no, you no have, Henry. <laughs> 850 of them. That's, that's ridiculous. I didn't know that hogs were voting. No, the, I, I, no they're I usually in office, but... <laughs> 850 inhabitants. They're not inhabitants. Out. Oh, yes, bears inhabit the forest. They certainly do. Please inhabit your beard, if you'd like. <laughs> no, that's just a perfectly permissible use of the word. By the authority invested in me, by the vest I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but you must find out how the thing how did, did happen. happen. I think that's hysteric. How, how did, did it happen? Uh, well, this is a U.S. swine research area. And swine? people work there, but they do not live there. Ah. Uh. <laughs> They invited him to, and the guy said, you call this living? <laughs> and they wouldn't move in. But they do have the geographical area. There's 850 hogs, and uh, that's it. I think well, you're going to count the flies and the... <laughs> <laughs> Not an afternoon when we have nothing else to do, and it wouldn't be a bad idea. I see chasing all the animals out the house. Go out and vote today. <laughs> Actually, lunch this week. It may be a boat. We heard about this because one of the hogs was a real squealer, and he. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mrs. Elliott, for telling us the sordid story. I will be back. I've got a secret. We'll continue in just one minute. And now let's get another contestant out here. to have you with us, young fellow. What's your name? Joey Edwards. Joey Edwards. And how old are you, Joey? Eight. Eight? Where do you live? Arlington, Texas. Texas man, panel. Besides being a straight-A student in the third grade, Joey also has a job, and that's what we want you to concern yourselves with, the, the secret involved the job he does. Joey, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll let the world know what it is. Uh-huh. Very good. I'll give you this additional clue, panel. It's an important job. And we'll start the questioning with Henry Morgan. Joey, do you, do you work for any part of the government? No. <laughs> By which I meant, you know, state, city, national, none of that. No. Do you work for an organization that makes money? Uh. It's yeah. supposed to, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a money-making idea. Now, um, uh, Steve said that it's an important job. Do they pay you a lot? No. <laughs> It's not that important. Do you do it? <laughs> Are you taking a job that ordinarily is taken by a, you know, a grown-up? Right. Does a, the fact that you're a straight-A student have much to do with the fact that you have this job? No. I would think, however, in all uh, credit to Joey, that it does help a lot. Yeah. Well, when you're doing whatever it is that you do, uh, do you do it indoors? Uh, yes. Do you, do you sit at a desk? Sit at a desk most of the time, do you? 
-hmm. I would think so, yes. Ah. One down, three to go, Anita. Listen, Joey, I have an eight-year-old kid who I want to get to work. <laughs> Have any more room there? <laughs> anyway, uh, when you you sit at a desk, you use your mind a lot, Joey. Yes. Use your brain. Do you use any math? Uh, no. No. But do you use one of the subjects that you learn in school? Yes. Does it have anything to do with science in any way? Mm, no. Does it? There's there's a sense in which almost any of his subjects might have some occasional use and relevance. Uh huh. Two down, two to go. Richard? Yeah. Joey, uh, do you perform a service for the community? Uh, yes. Do you work at a job like a... Do you answer telephones? Uh, well, many of us do no. in the process of our work, but it's not uh, what we're looking for. Uh, just a second. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> do you... You do answer, I mean, in the particular job you're doing, would you answer the telephone? Would that help you in your job? Yes. And is it, when you work indoors, I shall continue. <laughs> do you work at home? Uh, yes. Okay. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever saw a case that needed a rest, that's it. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Joey, how long have you been vice president of IBM? <laughs> the age of your secretary immediately. <laughs> Joey, does what you do have to do with any kind of research? Um, Answering questions that people call you in about uh, having to do... Only incidentally, wouldn't you yeah. say, Joe? Yeah. Uh, does it have to do with uh, 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 thinking up things, ideas, creative things that you draw down, put down on paper? Yes. Uh, well, that's it. <laughs> That's what you do. You're on the right track, uh, Pat. You're getting very close to it, I would imagine. Joey's secret is that he is really the editor of a national newspaper. Isn't that oh. right? <laughs> well, I saw skepticism on Henry's face. I also saw talcum powder on Henry's <laughs> face. That's another matter. So, here, Henry, and world is the uh, newspaper. It's titled, as you see, The Hoot Owl. It's a paper for children. I've seen that. Have you seen that, Pat? His dad it's is marvelous. a delivery boy. <laughs> <laughs> and the paper comes out every two weeks, and uh, every other week it goes back in, I guess. But anyway, it, no, it really is published every two weeks. How big a staff do you have, Joe? Over 300 kids. 300 kids working for you, my goodness. And how many people read it or subscribe to the paper? 136,000. That's very good. 136,000? How did you start the paper? Why did you start it? Well, uh, one of the reasons was I was on a uh, YMCA baseball team, mm -hmm. and uh, we were and we didn't have any losses all year, and uh, we were the first team in YMCA history to do that, and none of the papers printed it, and. <laughs> <laughs> So he got bugged at that, and he started his own paper. Now he mentions that every week, probably. Well, Joey, there's a great deal more we wish we had time to talk to you about, but uh, we don't How have time. How much is the subscription to the newspaper? What does it cost for a subscription? Six dollars a year. It's well worth every minute right. of it. Keep up the good work, Joey, and all your young friends, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> meet tonight's guest celebrity, the popular TV and recording star, Cass Elliott. Thank you. Welcome, Cass. Nice to have you with us. As you can see, the panelists are out of the way. We oh, have... I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> I see. Anyway, we put them into a soundproof room so that you could explain your secret without their hearing about it. Well, what I'm going to be doing is using uh, an experimental new voice-controlled telephone mm -hmm. that's uh, being developed by the Bell Laboratories. Here it is, right here. Uh, when you say voice-controlled, what do you mean? Well, as, if you can see the little light going around, there's a little light going around, and when you want to place a telephone call, well, first of all, it's intended to uh, provide telephone service, hands-free telephone service for people who perhaps have lost the use of their hands or, or have some mm. sort of motor uh, infirmity. So you and just say something to the phone? Say the digit. When the light goes on by the digit that you want, uh -huh. you, um, 
say the digit very clearly, and then it will record, and then you give the machine a command to dial. I see. And then it will dial. Yeah. So right now we can see it's going number five, yes. six, seven, seven very good. eight, and so forth. I can also tie my own shoelaces. I do a Wonderful. lot of... Can you show me your elbow and everything? Well, when... Not while we're on the air. <laughs> uh, but actually, it's a marvelous idea that the uh, Bell people have come up with, and it should be uh, very helpful to a lot of people. Now, uh, is it time now to bring the, uh, the panelists back in? Is there anything else? Well, we it is, it is uh, experimental. That's all we're going to say. Okay. Uh, they'll be able to see, of course, the uh, telephone here in full view as they do come Excuse back. me, Steve. The panel's on its way they in all, now. All set. Thank you very much, John. While we're waiting for them, uh, what's happening with your new nightclub act? Well, I, uh, I actually am going to do uh, a musical version of the Aaron Burr-Alexander Hamilton duel on stage live in Las Vegas. <laughs> playing both parts? You're yes, playing. I'm playing both parts. And uh, <laughs> then I'm going to dance on a ball around the stage on ice skates, which I think will be wow. very interesting. It'll be just an astounding act. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You all know each other, of course. All right, panel. Um, Cass Elliott's secret involves this telephone, as you might assume, and she's going to make a call on it, an actual call, She's going to make that call in a very unusual way. There's your clue, and we'll start the questioning with Richard Dawson. Uh, <clears throat> do we have to guess the way, uh, Mama, that you make the call, or to whom you're calling, or...? Just the way. The way would be yeah. good. The way? That black box that you have there in front of you, would this be a part of the way? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. That's part of the way. Is it uh, a machine that you speak the number that you're calling into? Yes. Well, yes. Actually, that's, 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 that's it. That's my bus. I have to go. But I'll see you. <laughs> Is it really? That's yes. it. Is it? We won't require any more of your time. Well, thank you very much. I have a plane to catch. I'll be just moving no, right now, along. Now that we've uh, discovered the secret, or Richard has, let's uh, show everybody how it works. Uh, as we were telling the audience earlier, it's been developed uh, by the Bell Laboratories to aid handicapped people who yeah. don't have the use of their hands or something of that sort. So now uh, I'm going to follow the instructions. You're going to pull that little? That little plug right there, which activates it. I just decided I'd use that word because I've always wanted to. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, Here we go. Okay, everybody quiet. Three... Six, nine, two, seven, six, five, Six. Oh. Seven. Dial. I got bingo! <laughs> Go. Congratulations, you have just won the Richard Dawson is not at home prize. <laughs> and of course he's not at home, you won't be able to collect it. But at the sound of the tone signal, please leave your name and your telephone number and I'll return your call. And if you believe that, I'd like to talk to you about some swampland I'm trying to get. <laughs> Wonderful. That's terrific. I would assume that the reason Dick didn't recognize his own numbers, there were a lot of numbers in front of it. Why yeah. all the extra numbers? Well, that's a, a code, an extra code to start the dialing. It sets and, it up. And uh, also so that everybody in America won't be calling him to buy swamp property, unless, did, of course, you want to sell really, all that Yeah, swamp. did you really dial my number? Yes. Yes. It, the thing really works. Is that really your answering thing, Richard? Is that really... That was me, yeah. Yeah, you that just was... Called my... Hey, do you realize when I get home, I've got a round of applause there? <laughs> Take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> you have one of those answering machines yeah, at your house, Yeah, and I put right? a different joke on there every day because most people get very um, Tense. Uh, uptight when the I machine do. answers. Yeah. For some unknown reason, you know, that's a... Uh, 
Oh, um, uh, oh, it's one of those machines. I... And then they hang up and they call back, very garbled. So I found if I put a joke on there, make them laugh, they'll relax yeah. enough to say, ha, oh, it's a machine. And then they... <laughs> I have a friend who has one of those machines who uh, composes a little song every day and sings the song into the machine. I always get very uptight and say, just say cast call, and then I hang up because I get very nervous about machines. I always, if I get a machine, I always say, hi, this is Richard Dawson's machine and I was feeling very lonely <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I'd call your machine. <laughs> That's a great invention. This, this is, uh, as, as I said before, it's experimental and Bell Telephone is, um, uh, Bell Laboratories is developing it and I think it's really going to be uh, an extremely uh, fascinating thing for people who do have difficulty in dialing yeah. a phone. I had a terrible time one night, seriously, at the New York Hilton. Uh, I pulled out the little thing because I wanted to leave a wake-up call and I thought 7.30 was the time. So I started to explain to the operator and then suddenly I realized that I was talking to a taped operator and that I wanted to get up at 7. And, but she had already said on tape, we have your call, you'll be awakened at 7.30. And then it was, I had to practically go through Alexander Graham Bell to have it reworked and changed. Very, very complex. Well, Cass, thank you so much. You, you uh, handled that thing very accurately, and we I congratulate you. I was scared you. of it. <laughs> <laughs> and we congratulate the Bell Laboratories for the uh, very fine effort because, uh, as we say, uh, handicapped people are going to be able to put this to a lot of important uses, and it's a fine thing. Thank you all very much. That's it for the moment. <laughs> If you enjoyed this, we're going to try it again next week, aren't we, gang? <laughs> well, yeah. you speak for yourself. I'm going to New York. <laughs> all right. See you all in New York. Bye-bye. <laughs> Undivided, teams of strangers take on hot-button issues. What percentage of Americans said they were in favor of daily prayer in the classroom? How do Americans feel about the death penalty? Oh.